What's up guys, welcome to another video. So today is a Friday for me. Um, what's up guys, welcome to another video. We're gonna dive straight into this session. Um, warm up's done, if you wanna see that, watch the previous videos or other videos on foam rolling, activation, pillar prep, uh, rehab and prehab work, done that. So we're straight into the session. So today is a Friday for me. Um, our games in France are on Sunday. Um, if your game is on a Saturday, I'd say put this session on a Thursday. So today's a power session, it's a full body power session, nothing too strenuous on the CNS system. Uh, we don't want to create fatigue going into the Sunday game or your Saturday game. So it's quick power work, it's not heavy work, it's, I'd say, power work is more anywhere from 30 to 50% of your 1RM. Um, if I'm wrong, there will be something up on the screen. Um, There'll be something on the screen anyway. This right here, what I'm what I'm showing you here now is all the percentages, the rep schemes. So that's all there for you to see. Great. Um, so we're going to dive straight in. Uh, full body. First exercise is kind of a want get you into things. Um, it's explosive. It's explosive work. So it's for your core. It's for your hips. I'm going to teach you the exercise. Um, and it's all about the rotation and powering through the hips, not so much as the pass I'm about to show you. So I'll watch it and then I'll explain to you. We're gonna do three sets of five reps on this, both sides. Ball stats to the hip. I'm leaning back. So, key points from this. The ball is gonna start on my hip and I'm going to be leaning back on that left foot. So I'm going to be leaning back like this, and then as I convert, yeah, as I change through, I'm changing to this right hip. So I don't, you don't want to be leaning back. You want to be here, powering through. The change comes from the hips, as you can see there. I'm going like this, powering through, powering through. So this is also good for agility. So the acceleration and deacceleration. So Passing it through, that's the acceleration phase. Catching the ball, bringing it back, taking it to your hip. That's the absorbing the energy. That's the deacceleration phase. So, explosive work, help you with your agility work. Um, many explosive work, I'd say. Really pushing through. Uh, also, it's gonna help with your passing skills. Not as much, this is more of a lower body core hip, um, power movement. So three sets of five on that, just by itself, and then we'll change to the next exercise. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to close grip um, bench press is going to be a power movement, so again, three sets of five. Um, it's a study on the screen right now. Um, basically, there was a test to show that um, power was increased uh, more by doing close grip bench as opposed to, I'm not 100% sure what it said in the study, but um, if you want to increase your power, close grip bench press is the way to go, basing it on this one study. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to superset that with some barbell push-offs, um, again replicating the old handoff situation um, and just upper, bar, upper body pushing movements. Also, for close grip, Close grip isn't here. Here we'll do shoulder width apart, just where the whatever you want to call these things are. Shoulder width apart, not too close. Perfect. Okay, so superset with a barbell, weight on one side, on our knees. The reason why you're on your knees is because it takes out the work of other muscle groups. It's kind of think of the word isolates. So we're isolating the upper body movement. Um, it involves a bit more of your core as well. I suppose if we were stood up. I'd be involved in my legs, so quads, hamstring, glutes, um, and then becomes a bit of a whole body movement. And I want to isolate 
and really power through the core and pushing up. Core is very important in rugby. There are, there are many ways you can um, perform power movements, like for example for the bench, there's many different ways you can do it. We can push, I can put a band around it, um, I can do it single arm with a, uh, a dumbbell, um, I can do a floor press through a power movement, um, as you can see you can do handoffs, okay, that's pushing movement, there are many different ways but you want to periodise it, so or you don't want to put everything you know, you don't want to do it straight away because you're doing too many things and you need to progress onto something. So, for example, you start with this bench, just lowering it and pushing, um, and then from there, you could put a band around it after, or you could go to bench press um, pushes. So, pushing, letting go of the bar, pushing it up, catching and coming back down. I've shown you guys that before. That would be some, if you watch my last video, that would be elastic uh, explosivity because you're pushing up, you're absorbing the energy to bring it back and then pushing again. This is more RFD because I'm bringing it down um, and I'm, I'm stopping at the bottom and I'm powering up so it's, it's a static movement. It's from a, a stopped position. Um, again, also with these handoffs, if you have a partner, um, I recommend doing it by yourself is a bit not the best. Um, you can have them hold it, drop it, catch it, bring it back, build the elastic energy and push it. Again, because in a rugby game, uh, depending on how you hand off, you can hand off with a stiff arm, so they just come in and you just push them off, or you can bring them in, you can push them away, and as you're running, you tend to start here and push off. So that could replicate in a game movement, or by yourself equally, you can catch it, push it off, grab it, but for me, I'm just simply just pushing it like that. Again, you progress onto these things. Set two. Right, so I take it off. Lower it down slowly, pause, push. I remember, as I said earlier, I'm shoulder width now. Imagine if I was in here. This movement is nothing. It's awkward, painful and rubbish for your wrist, for your shoulders, for everything. All right, I'll show you both movements here. So first, we're gonna break it down. It's the original. Change. So, the other one you can do, you can hold it there, drop and push it, so, or you can, between both, you can throw. Base. Ah. You gotta trust yourself. Like so. Or just one side. Again. What it comes down to is your specific needs currently. So I can't tell you what's best for everything, it's what's best for you. So there's ways to determine if you need more RFD work or more elastic work. And the way that is, is. So I had to double check I wasn't giving you guys rubbish. Um, so the way you determine it in terms of um, kind of leg power to determine between if you need RFD or elastic work, um, do three jumps. So you do normal jump, so you stand, jump up. You do a pause jump, so you squat down, pause. Then you jump and you do a depth jump. So st standing on a bench, walk off or jump off and then explode up quickly. If your pause jump is significantly lower than your normal jump, um, so 85% or less, you need to work on your RFD. Um, if your depth jump, yeah, if your depth jump is equal to or lower than your normal jump, you need to work on elastic explosiveness. So um, that's for leg power to determine that for a pressing movement. Um, It's hard to determine it for a pressing movement because you'd need, there's this technology, there's this, um, I don't know what it's called, it's a box, it's a, it attaches by wire to the barbell. 
it cost about a grand or something. Uh, the S professional S and C coaches have it. Um, you can use it. They use it for their legs and squatting as well. You bring it down, you push it up, and by that wire is pulled, it determines the velocity from that. Um, if you have the money for that, feel free to buy it. But I do not. So um, that's why in the last video I've generally said you need to work both. Um, for your legs, you can determine that. It's it's. I guess easier because you can measure the jump high or if you have one of those special again SNC coaches will have this as a mat um, and you start on it you jump I've used them before and you land and it determines I think the time from which you take off and you land it works out the velocity from that I'm not 100% sure but um, that's how you can work it out if you want to know which one you need to improve on I work both set three Three sets done, pardon me, on to the next exercise. Okay, so during the week, uh, so we're doing bent over rows. I've done penley rows, which was with a barbell here, pull, release, pull, release. Um, so that was in my last video, so um, that was a, more of a power work during the week as well. So I'm gonna be doing some, I can't remember the name of these. Uh, I'm gonna superset that with pull-ups as well. Um, so five reps each is a power movement, so Try and pull and release if you can, if not just a quick pull. Um, there aren't many, well I'm searching for more exercises to do that are a pulling movement. There aren't many um, because that action is pulling movement. You can do bent over rows, penley rows. Um, you can do the dumbbell rows. Uh, I find it harder to kind of control a power dumbbell. We've got, uh, uh, ours only go up to 30 kg. so. I really prefer heavier ones to really pull. Um, so yeah, three sets of five on this. Um, and I will keep the research to find some better, not better exercises, but more of a variety of exercises I can do for the pulling motion on power of the day. So I got that variation from Kia, the rugby strength coach. Uh, he wrote me a program last season for my pre-season work. And in the third phase, which is the power phase, he um, superset those two together. So I kind of use that every now and again, because um, I like it. Uh, but yeah, I need to get thinking. Anyone knows any good exercises? Any coaches that watch this? Probably not, but comment below, please. Exercise I did forget, you can do, uh, what's it called, upright rows, so, but I'm more of the, that's uh, a pulling motion, I guess, uh, might that in later, might add that in after. On a bus, at the back, I'm in a rush, and she following me, I'm like no one, we should hop off choppers since we got sleeved up. So, next exercise. I believe this is not very accessible in like a normal gym that everyone goes to, but if you have a gym and you're lucky enough to have this kind of equipment, this kind of space and time, um, happy days. If not, you can use a bench. Um, the reason why I use uh, the foam roller, as you can see, it kind of fits around my ankle perfectly. It's 
Whereas the bench is kind of uncomfortable because it's kind of like at a 90 degree angle. Um, I've felt uncomfortable when I use a bench, but when I use a foam roller, it's much easier. So we're going to be doing Zercher Bulgarian split squats. So I've never done this exercise before. I saw it online on Instagram. Um, so Zercher carries, if you know, or Zercher squats, the bar goes across your forearms like this. Um, and if you watch, it really does replicate the tackle. Um, and what is an important factor here is the, the forward tilt. I'll be leaning forward slightly. So I'm going to show you the exercise. I'll show you a few different angles. Um, and I'm quite excited about this exercise. So, it is difficult for balance, have you seen? Right side, that's my bad ankle, so I'm still um, still uh, working on the whole balancing kind of stuff I need to. So you can see I've got that slight tilt forward. Um, I think it's great for strength and power in your right, in your sing, in your leg, each leg. Words. So as opposed to doing like a squat, squat jumps, which are very good. I use them as well. Um, this kind of the tackle, you tackle up like this, and when you tackle, you're in that split stance. Oh, I hope you're in that split stance to push up. So it, I think it really replicates the tackle perfectly. Um, and we'll see how I progress and how it goes in the program. I forgot to mention I'm supersetting this with depth, depth jumps. Key points here, um, as soon as you touch the ground, you explode up. Land with a flat foot, don't land on the balls of your feet. Land with a flat foot, explode. Point your toes as well, jump, point your toes up. Five of them, uh, sweet. Right, okay, that's the session over. Okay, so that's the session over. It's just a very short 45 to an hour um, of workout. Okay, so that's the session over. It's around 45 minutes to an hour, um, not a long, long session. Um, just getting in the stretch in the prehab work, getting the power work ready for the weekend. Um, some new stuff for me there, the first exercise with the medicine ball, that's a new one. And obviously that leg exercise there is also a new one. Um, it's always good to change up every uh, four to six weeks, I'd say, um, depending on the exercise, because you, you always want to progress. Um, whether that's changing your percentages, changing the weight you're working at, you should always be progressing. Um, 
even if it's by 1.25 kilograms on weight or not always weight or the power you're doing, anything. Progression is always what we're looking for. Um, so any questions on power programs, uh, power exercises, anything, drop it down below. Also, still selling the programs. Uh, the sale of January is obviously finished now. So um, I'll be, I will get the website done eventually. Um, so any, I know some guys are in pre-season now, other in the summer, Southern Hemisphere. If you want a pre-season program, hit me up. Uh, all the guys that are other in the Northern Hemisphere, we're obviously in our in-season. So if you want an in-season workout um, program, hit me up. Uh, coming to the second part of the season. So it's very important for the playoffs and all that. So happy to help. Um, and yeah. That will do it. So comment down below. Hope you liked it. Share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.